So I've titled my talk this year, Big Things Big, Small Things Small. I first heard that phrase um, sometime last winter when I was in a conversation with Worthington Hills sixth grade teacher, Greg Ross. Greg att attributed the phrase to the retired senior pastor at Worthington Christian Church, Dr. Marshall Hayden. So big things big, small things small. So it was the summer of 69. Me and some guys from school, we had a band. <laughs> and we tried real hard. Jimmy quit. Jody got married. I should have known that we'd never get far. Hold on, that, that is the wrong summer. It was the summer of 1967. Worthington Schools was in the midst of a building boom. Colonial Hills Elementary was 12 years old. Evening Street and Wilson Hill were four years old. Brookside, a mere two years old. And the summer before, Worthington had opened a state-of-the-art middle school in the Columbus area, Worthing Way Middle School. <laughs> After the passage of a bond issue in 1966, Worthington was set to open Worthington Estates Elementary in the fall of 1967. Construction on this new 20-classroom school had been difficult. But the school district was proceeding as planned. They hired Evening Street principal Eugene Putterbaugh to be the first principal of Worthington Estates. 18 teachers were either transferred from their current school or hired to work at the new elementary school. All spring, the district had held redistricting meetings, trying to move students from their current school to the new Worthington Estates. Families were frustrated. Nobody wants to leave their current school, and Worthington had had to redistrict several times in the previous five years. By late June, Superintendent Harold McCord knew they had a problem. Because of construction delays, Worthington Estates would not be ready to open when school was set to begin. Mr. McCord had been the superintendent of, of Worthington Schools since 1938. He had seen almost everything in his career. But he hadn't seen this. Guys, I imagine that he called a late night meeting of his team. In my mind, <laughs> in my mind, Superintendent McCord is wearing a gray three-piece suit with a fedora on his head even though it's summertime. <laughs> the meeting would have been held at the administrative office building, which in 1966 was the old Episcopal Rectory, just west of the Worthington Inn on New England Avenue, the building that some of us in Worthington know today as the Dahl Museum. <laughs> at this meeting would have been Principal Putterbaugh and Board of Education President Dr. Robert Holsinger, Jr., I imagine that the room was smoky as each of the meeting participants attempted to calm their nerves with their camel cigarettes. <laughs> On the tables, guys, were the maps of Worthington. Push pens designated exactly where every Worthington student lived. These were the very maps that had been used in the redistricting meetings throughout the spring. The very maps that caused the resident on New England Avenue to get an attorney to try to keep his child at Colonial Hills Elementary. <laughs> now the maps were held down with ashtrays, and as the night progressed, a smoky haze enveloped the room. <laughs> it was on that early summer night when a plan was hatched. See, there weren't a lot of good options. School had to begin in Worthington after Labor Day and Worthington Estates would not be ready. Mr. McCord, Mr. Putterbaugh, and Dr. Holsinger determined that first through third graders, there was no kindergarten in 1967, first through third graders would attend Evening Street in the morning. And then in the afternoon, the first through third graders and their teachers from Worthington Estates would use those very same Evening Street classrooms. All fourth graders, 
from Evening Street and Worthington Estates would go to Brookside Elementary. All fifth graders from those two buildings would go to the Kilbourne Building. And all sixth graders from those two buildings would go to Worthing Way Middle School. It would work. It wouldn't be easy. Teachers at all five schools would have to adapt, and certainly parents would be frustrated. The meeting went late into the night. Sometime after midnight, Superintendent McCord headed home. He was restless, and when he was restless, he would often go out into his workshop to work. It was going to be a long summer, explaining these changes to families and teachers. But big things big, small things small. Where kids go to school, that was a small thing. The kids would adapt, and they'd probably be better for it. The parents, on the other hand, Superintendent McCord went and got a drink. <laughs> I need you to fast forward with me now 31 years. It's 1998, and I'm in my second year of teaching at Evening Street Elementary School. I'm teaching on a sixth grade team with Joe Hall and Barb Spears. Down the hall from me is a young Tammy Hines. And I'm beginning to develop a complex because I'm pretty sure Tammy's a better teacher than I am. <laughs> I'd been hired the year before as a fifth grade teacher, and then I looped with my students into sixth grade. Back in 1998, it was common in Worthington to be rift, reduced in force after your first year of teaching. All year, I held my breath, and I, I still had a job when, when the fall came the next year. But in that fall, I was still really nervous. And so I gathered up my courage to talk with Evening Street principal at the time, Dr. Ann Heffernan. And I tell you, I gathered up my courage because I was scared to death of Dr. Heffernan. <laughs> you know, if you want the truth, I'm still kind of scared to death <laughs> of Dr. Heffernan. But I puffed out my chest, and Mrs. Given ushered me into the office. Ann was sitting behind her desk. Ann was in, the desk was in the exact same spot that Mary's desk is now. And she was sitting behind her desk, and I remember I walked in, and I was kind of like hemming and hawing back and forth, and I'm thinking, um, Ann, um, um, so um, am I going to have a job next year? And Ann, you know, she looked at me, and I can't imagine what was going through her mind, but I, I imagine it was like, what is, what is wrong with this guy? <laughs> but she's like, Trent, relax. You're going to be fine. I was like, sweet. Like, I felt really good about it. We felt so good about it that my wife and I, we went out and we bought our first house. 321 East Selby Boulevard in Colonial Hills. Neighbors on one side with Tom O'Leary Jr. and on the other side with Meredith and Pete Bruins. Teaching sixth grade was great. I just did whatever Joe Hall did, and the fall <laughs> flew by. It was sometime in March of 1999 when I received a message that Dr. Heffernan wanted to see me after school. Guys, my heart stopped for a minute. I'm thinking to myself, is she still mad at me because I didn't complete my QM folders the way I was supposed to last year? <laughs> or do you think she knows that I've been using John Eyre, our custodian's copy code, and not sending my papers <laughs> to the copy center? I'm ashamed to tell you that a number of these different thoughts went through my mind. <laughs> but nothing prepared me for what Ann actually had to say to me. Remember, I, I walked into her office, and again, she was behind her desk. But this time, she stood up, and she reached across the desk, and she had a sealed envelope, and she said, Trent, I'm sorry, but I was told I have to give you this. Uh-oh. I remember I was in Ann's office, and I opened the letter right in her office, and it was only a few sentences. But it informed me that I was going to be riffed for the following year for 0.5 of my job. I remember thinking, 0.5? Like, how's this 0.5 thing going to work? Like, would they really make me teach kindergarten? <laughs> you know, Anne didn't have any answers for me, but she registered my concern. And so a few days later, I was in my classroom teaching at the time. My classroom was on the second floor, right at the um, top of the stairwell where Lori Hall's room is now. I'm in that room teaching, and a man came to my door. He's wearing a suit, and it was human resource director for Worthington at the time, Dr. Gerald Prince. And he said, Trent, can I see you for a minute in the hallway? You know, and my kids, they were like writing their spelling words 10 times each or something. Good instruction this was not. So I had time 
to talk to Dr. Prince. And so I went out in the hallway, and he's like, Trent, um, I'm sorry about the letter we had to give you, but it's, it's going to work out. And I remember I was in the hallway with Gerald. And I'm like, Gerald, um, how <laughs> is it going to work out? And in the kind and patient way that is Dr. Gerald Prince, he just kind of looked at me and said, Trent, trust me. It's going to work out. Guys, here's the thing. At the time, I couldn't see it. Like, I could see not having a job. I couldn't see how this point five thing was going to work. The following year, when I left Evening Street to become the dean of students at McCord Middle School, I didn't leave because I had some sort of grand plan to move into school administration. At that point in my career, I wanted to teach and I wanted to coach. I wanted to have the kind of impact over a career that a Vince Trombetti or a John Sprunger has had. When I left Evening Street to go to McCord, mind you, the McCord job was open because Dan Girard had left to go into private business for a little while. But when I left to take that McCord job, it was because it was a full-time job. And the job that I had was no longer available. Or at least I was not patient enough to see that it would at some point become available. At that point in my life, that was a really big thing. In the end, I can look back on it and say it was probably a small thing. See, sometimes change happens like it did when Worthington Estates was set to open in 1967. Our Kilbourne building opened in the 1930s as a one through eighth grade school. It served in that capacity until 1966 when Worthing, Worthing Way was opened and Kilbourne became a one through sixth grade school. It served in that capacity for, for a number of years and eventually became the ninth grade building. In 1992, when Worthington Kilbourne High School opened, the ninth grade building was closed. And for a semester in 1992, Kilbourne actually served as the Linworth Alternative Program. In 1995, Kilbourne was reopened as a middle school, as a seventh and eighth grade school, as it is today. Every one of those changes was big at the time. In 1986, Sutter Park Elementary was opened. In 2005, because of declining enrollment, Worthington closed Sutter Park Elementary, only to reopen it again as a, as a preschool several years later. Big changes at the time. Some of you remember a time where the sixth graders from Slate Hill Elementary were actually served at McCord Middle School. And an eighth grade team from McCord Middle School was housed at Worthington Kilbourne High School. As enrollment continued to decline, the district created Phoenix Middle School and closed Perry Middle School. Some of you in this room lived through a time where 25 teachers were reduced out of Worthington Kilbourne High School alone. Big changes at the time. If you lived through these changes or if you read about them in the Worthington News, teachers were understandably frustrated. People ran for school board to show their displeasure. Parents hired attorneys to try to stop the changes. Big changes at the time. Small changes in retrospect. My personal story of change, to me at the time, big, giant, guys, it rocked my world. I look back on it 20 years later, small, maybe the best thing that ever happened to me in my career, and certainly Tammy Hines was a better teacher than I am. <laughs> big things big, small things small. So people tell me that nothing ever changes in Worthington schools. I tell them that that's a myth. Change has been constant, and I'm here today to remind you that it will likely continue to be constant. Some of that change may include you. It may include where you teach. It may include what you teach. It may include where your own children go to school. I'm not certain what changes will occur in Worthington schools over the next five years, but based on our enrollment trends, I am certain that some level of organizational change is going to be necessary. And that change will affect almost every one of us in the room, some of us in multiple ways. When that change happens, big things big, small things small. So if everything I've listed so far is on the small things list, even if it felt like a big thing at the time, what actually qualifies as a big thing? James Ford was the 2015 North Carolina Teacher of the Year. 
In the January 31st, 2017 edition of Ed Week magazine, he said this. He said, the relational part of teaching is often its most underrated aspect. He said, sometimes when teachers are good at building relationships with their students, it's seen as a cover for a lack of content knowledge or a lack of an ability to instruct with rigor. But James said, I see it differently. He said, I've learned that when students come into my classroom with so many different base level needs, a certain foundation has to be laid before real learning can take place. As teachers, we're all well-schooled in the work of Benjamin Bloom. In our classrooms, we're constantly trying to push our students up this taxonomy of learning, from remembering to creating. We're pushing for deeper learning and higher quality work. What is often neglected, not in Worthington, but what is often neglected is that students have needs, and these needs transcend their academics, and these needs have to be met before real learning can take place. These needs aren't in the standards or the curriculum. Psychologist Abraham Maslow, he theorized that as humans, we all have this hierarchy of needs, and we have to meet our base level needs, food, safety, security, rest, those have to be met before our higher level needs, things like esteem, social skills, education, can really take hold. With that in mind, our first job as educators is to really learn our students, to connect with them on a real level, to show respect for their culture, and affirm their right to the highest quality education. Our students' growth and high achievement, it's just the fruits of this labor. But the truth is, before the seed can be planted, the ground must first be prepared. And in our classrooms, Maslow always comes before Bloom. In Worthington, In Worthington, we frame this focus on, with, on building relationships with our students as our first priority. Be kind to kids. Let's check out this video. Being kind to kids means that you, you show compassion to them. I think that means be nice to them playing with them on the playground. I just think teachers are just like, they don't have them like, they're just teachers. Like they don't, they don't go home and sleep, they're just like robots. But if you show them like you're like actual, like a person, like you're a human. I was feeling kind of down and they just um, helped me brighten up so I could feel happier. And Miss Humphrey down in the library, I think believed I didn't have any friends. So every day she would come up and sit with me and talk with me about my classes, what book I was reading. She always was trying to introduce me to kids in the library. Kindergarten, I um, raced and waved to um, the bus 90 driver. And um, at the end of the year, he gave me a McDonald's card. My sixth grade math teacher, Miss Ball, she's always been really, um, what's the word, motivating and supportive when like if I have a question or whatever, she'll, she won't be like, oh, what is it this time? Mrs. Quatman, um, we're working on hands-on equations and I have like 10,000 questions every time that I need help with and she's always, she like you can't even tell if it annoys her. My math teacher, Ms. Lawwell, she, I'll just go up to her at the end of class and I'll be like, I forget this and she'll tell me like the first step and then I'll start to remember. I used to get homesick and my teacher, Mrs. Stewart, she would come for me and it made me feel um, happy and excited to learn. When I was having trouble with my topic, like deciding what my opinion on it was, Mr. S just basically took like the entire um, class work time and talked to me. We worked in a special needs class and Ms. Seibert, um, she does a lot of things special for us and she's very nice to us and she wants 
got cookies for the teachers and she let us have one. One day before the math homework was due, uh, I was really struggling. I didn't know what was going. I didn't know what was going on. I asked Miss Cabello, my math teacher, and we she just took the homeroom time and helped me figure it out. When I was a crossing guard. They always, she always says, "Have a good day." One teacher that was extra nice to me is Mr. Pound. I would trust him if I ever had a phone. I would trust him to borrow my phone if his died and he didn't have a charger. At the end of my classes, I get to talk to Roseanne, especially the fact that she has offered a lot of resources for me to study, especially over history, because it's not just what's in the class, what we're learning about. So like, I don't have dairy like because or anything. Mr. Reed got ice cream, but I couldn't have it, and he got me my own ice cream. I was like, wow, that's really nice. So yeah. Right. Brother, he lost his bracelets. The next day, he went down to the janitor's office and asked the janitor, Mr. Hicks, if he saw them, and the janitor said yes, and then he went and grabbed them. Mrs. Smith, she really helped me a lot with like high school scheduling, and so like she really had to get to know like what I really liked in school. Mr. Court, you know, like for me at least, he's just like taking time. Um, after his day, if he sees me in the hallways, he'll like stop me and just talk to me, uh, asking me how I'm doing. I'll come in the office, everybody's so nice there, and it's just like a nice environment. This is Roman, my math teacher. Um, whenever I'm struggling with something or I don't know what's going on in class, she'll always like make time for me. With Mr. Caruso, because he just always got out of his way to help me out, and he's kind of like a dad to everybody at McCord. One is a fifth grade teacher, Miss Colt, she's always kind to others. And like anytime you're kind of struggling with something and you just really don't get it, she'll like maybe take the time out and help you understand it. My English teacher, Miss Wagner, she's she's a very kind teacher and like she really considers the students' time. It makes me feel like like a human being rather than just like a machine trying to get all this work done. The cafeteria ladies, they are they're really nice. They like make you smile and they always have something funny to say. So there's like a joke of the day and then When I went to Thomas, uh, Mr. Bluevol was my dean. I didn't really get along with him. We butted heads and it was the way it was. But when I came here I saw that he was my science teacher and at first I was like, oh no. Just a couple of times walking a lap outside and talking to him, we became really good friends. Well being kind also includes like giving a good education because that Students don't always see that that's kind, but they're helping you like get your life on the right track. When I was in sixth grade, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer, and my sixth grade English teacher, Mrs. Reed Miller, she went through that experience around the same time. So she went out of her way every day to ask me how I was and how I was doing, and if I ever wanted to talk about it, she would listen and she would um, help me with my schoolwork if I ever fell behind. And she just made sure that I was completely just happy with where I was and, and could have a safe place that I could talk to someone and, and be myself. So big things big, small things small. Sometimes change happens like it did when Worthington Estates was set to open in 1967. Some level of organizational change in fairly major ways has occurred in Worthington schools every decade for the past 50 years, and it will likely happen again soon. What I'm here today to remind you of is it will be okay. Our focus in Worthington schools is and always has been in taking care of our kids, in making sure that they have a trusted adult who they know cares about them and believes in them. No matter where we teach our kids, no matter what our attendance lines, how we take care of our kids, how we invest in their lives, how we build relationships with them that allow them to grow and achieve at high levels, those are the big things. Our mission in Worthington is to empower a community of learners who will change the world. In order to do that, big things big, small things small. Let's be kind to kids. <laughs>